I'm so excited. We are playing dress up today, but there is a theme. We are going to be dressing for the seven feminine archetypes. It's basically like seven different personality types that we as women all possess. And we have all seven of them somewhere in our body, but just at different percentages. There is typically about one, two, or three that are the most predominant within each woman. So some of these might resonate with you more than the others, but it is important to know all seven because there are different phases through our life where we can call upon each archetype to help us overcome any type of situation or just anything that comes along our journey, you can channel into these archetypes and really use them to your advantage. The first archetype we are going to dress for is the lover. And we actually all have the lover to some degree within us. And there's even 13 subcategories to the lover, which are the 13 seduction archetypes. So if you would like me to make a video on dressing for each of those or just talking about them in general, I would be more than happy to share all that information with you guys. But anyways, back to just the lover overall. This is a really strong energy. It's a really intense, like sexy, seductive energy. They are extremely creative. They are extremely independent. They have a little bit of edge and they have this incredibly strong magnetic presence. So when you see them, you know, they have that kind of inexplainable gravitational pull. You're just drawn into their energy. They really exude passion and they evoke passion out of you. And so some figures to kind of look towards and who I'm looking towards for fashion inspiration for this is Angelina Jolie and Rita Hayworth, specifically Rita Hayworth in Gilda. Doesn't it bother you at all that you're married? What I want to know is, does it bother you? She is exuding more siren energy, which is one of the subcategories of the lover. It's one of the 13 seduction archetypes. So that's kind of what I'm getting inspiration for for this first look. So colors to think about for the lover are colors that really create strong emotion. And the two colors that create the most emotion psychologically is red and black. There's so much psychology behind the color red. It's it's really incredible, but it draws the most emotion out of us in terms of passion, aggression even. It also forces you to stop and look, especially with, you know, stop signs and red lights. We're literally trained to stop and look at red things. Black is the next strongest color and it's the most high contrast color. It's also very striking and it's it's really sexy. It's a little bit mysterious. So we are gonna dress in all black. Specifically, the outfit inspiration that I am using for the lover is Gilda. So there's this one scene where she's dancing and she has these gloves on and she kind of almost does like a little strip tease, but just with the gloves. It's incredible, it's amazing. So um, yeah, it was definitely because of that movie that I got these gloves, but also just because I love gloves in general, I do think that they are really sexy. And I'm going to wear it with these little feathered heels. So I love this style of shoe right now. I did wear this outfit out and let me tell you, if you want attention, wear gloves <laughs> because I, I went out by myself and I had so many people coming up and talking to me and asking me questions and I definitely feel like I was exuding a lot of that siren energy, a lot of that lover energy because that truly was my inspiration when I was getting dressed. When I made this outfit for that evening, I was channeling my inner Rita Hayworth. I was channeling my inner siren. This is the finished look. I. I'm obsessed with it. I love this outfit. It's probably my favorite. Also, I really resonate with this archetype. But let's move on to the next one, which is another one that I feel like I resonate with and really enjoy. And it is the Maiden. So the Maiden has this really innocent and childlike nature to them. They're they're very pure, they're very playful, very cheerful, and they also kind of have that really like irresistible pull to them as well. So some figures to look towards that I also looked at inspiration in terms of the outfit that we're going to make together <laughs> is like Marilyn Monroe. She had that very sweet, innocent How do you put it around your neck? 
don't, lovey. It goes on your head. You must think I was born yesterday. Well, sometimes there's just no other possible explanation. No, no, my dear. She's quite right. Like so. It's a tiara. <laughs> you do wear it on your head. I just love finding new places to wear diamonds. Optimistic, like eyes bright and just very sweet, open-minded, speaks her mind. But also someone like Taylor Swift is an example. She has this very like pure heart, this very sweet and innocent and playful nature about her. And also Audrey Hepburn, specifically um, in Breakfast at Tiffany's when she plays Holly Go Lightly, she is just this super fun, innocent, playful, joyful, childlike character that just kind of does whatever she wants. She's living in her own beautiful dreamland. Now I've got a wonderful idea. We could spend the whole day doing things we've never done before. We'll take turns for something you've never done and me. Of course, I can't really think of anything I've never done. Shoes! You can only find one. You were darling to help. I could never have done it without you. When I think of like the maiden archetype, I just think really girly, really feminine, really flirty and carefree. And I think that that I just think this outfit totally exudes a really childlike, almost fantasy type nature to it. Especially, I think I'm going to wear these shoes with it. I've never worn these shoes with this outfit, but I think it's it's kind of fun. It's got a really playful energy to the shoe. It laces up if you choose. Um, these are like a Colt Gaia dupe. I actually got these off Nasty Gal. I have it, these earrings and this necklace set that I got off Amazon, and this dress is from Sabo Skirt, and I think I'm going to carry this cute little basket. I don't know. I'm ready for a picnic in this outfit, but I really think that the child energy is very important to call on, especially if you feel like you've been taking life a little bit too seriously and you're trying to channel a little bit more joy and just more play. I really love this maiden energy just because, I don't know, it just like reminds me to to be free and to express joy and play. and. The next archetype that we are going to be looking at is kind of in contrast to the maiden and it's the mother. So the mother, ugh, the mother energy is just so powerful and so beautiful. It is extremely grounded, extremely down to earth, very nurturing. They are the caregivers. They're so compassionate. They're so warm. They're just so comforting. Being around somebody that has this archetypal energy, you just, you feel really safe with them. So some figures to look to for this mother type energy is someone like Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins has beautiful mother energy. She's just so fun and so caring and protective also. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. Even Forrest Gump's mom, I, she has just the most pure mother energy, the way that she protects Forrest, the way that she just unconditionally supports him and loves him and just creates like this perfect nourishing environment for him to thrive. Like, it's just beautiful. Don't ever let anybody tell you they're better than you, Forrest. If God intended everybody to be the same, he'd have given us all braces on our legs. Mom always had a way of explaining things so I could understand them. You're the same as everybody else. You are no different. But also my favorite and who I'm looking for for fashion inspiration for this archetype is Sophia Loren. And she is an Italian goddess. She was an actress from old Hollywood back in the day. And oh my gosh, her story is so beautiful. She devoted everything to her family when you know her and her husband started having kids. Like she would do anything for them and was just so loving and so protective and so nurturing of her children. It, it's really so beautiful. Specifically with Sophia Loren, she wore like a lot of midi skirts, but a lot of things that kind of showed off her very womanly figure. And um, you can see this even in like Forrest Gump's mom and like even in Mary Poppins, like a lot of waist defining 
silhouettes and a lot of silhouettes that really show off their feminine figure. Pearls are just really classic and I feel like Ma, like this mother energy, she's really classic, she's very feminine, she, I don't know, I just, yeah, this is what I've come up with so far. Um, I put on these little chain pearl earrings, this pearl necklace that I thrifted, and this little corset top that I got from Nasty Gal, and then I have this leather midi skirt that I thrifted. So I, like I said, I was taking inspiration from Sophia Loren and she had a lot of like bustier, corset -y style tops that she would always wear. archetype is the queen of course we had to get to her she is just a divine goddess you see a queen you know she's a queen she owns it she does not hide it she is front and center right there so the queen energy oh my gosh they have the most beautiful relationships with people they have the most beautiful friendships and they're very keen on social alliances too so they're very social creatures and they're very good at attracting really strong and powerful friendships or relationships or people in general and then also maintaining really healthy relationships with them so when you think queen you just think confidence you can't help but think that of examples of course obviously queen bee beyonce she's probably like you know the most obvious queen of choice she is such a strong powerful confident woman another example is also blair waldorf not everyone wants to be blair waldorf not everyone can be it's just absolutely undeniable that these women have such incredible power when I think of this queen energy in terms of fashion and dressing, I definitely think drama and I also think statement jewelry. This is the outfit. Sorry, I'm just tucking my sweatshirt into my pants. Oh, like this just makes a statement. I thrifted this from Threda and then I'm wearing those same express pants from earlier and I'm going to pair it with these heels. So I love these heels. They have a little gold kind of bamboo style heel, which I think is so fun. These I got from Zara. Okay, I have this really fun and dramatic bracelet. I got this from Express. It's just all these um, like little rhinestone chains with a nice big clasp. So it's kind of like a cuff almost. Okay, yeah, I, I think the belt is definitely fun. I need a necklace for sure, or should I just go for like crazy earrings? I have like chain mail earrings to match the belt. I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, yeah, these earrings, these are so cool. I got, where did I get these? I think I got these from Express also. So this is the whole outfit and Man, if you are looking to improve your confidence, I think dressing in this queen archetype is just the way to do it. It's really great to call on that queen energy when you're looking to improve your confidence or just feel more confident about yourself. The next feminine archetype is the huntress. And ooh, do not mess with her. She sets a goal, she goes, she gets it. This this archetype, this woman, she achieves everything she sets her mind to. You can't do that. She's like, watch me, watch me. I'm going to do it and I'm going to blow all of you guys away. She's this beautiful, adventurous spirit. She's so determined. She has this really radiant strength and resilience to her as well. And she's definitely more of the independent type. Figures that we can look towards are Serena Williams. She is just such a dominant force. She is an unstoppable, powerful athlete and such a huge source of inspiration for women everywhere. And uh, another figure would be like Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. I and, like, I don't know, that one seems kind of obvious because she's like literally the huntress. She's the bow and arrow goddess. This archetype in terms of fashion, I definitely think um, more masculine silhouettes such as pants, trousers. I think of more um, like hard things 
Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. I think of like leather, I think of like a belt. I'm keeping things in terms of jewelry and accessories like really minimal. Um, I did put on just a couple of rings and I am going to be wearing these little cheetah print heels. I thought that that brought in some of that girly feminine energy, but in a way that is also still exuding a lot of strength. Okay, let's break down this outfit. I got this bodysuit from Abercrombie and then I got these leather pants also from Abercrombie. The shoes I got from Old Navy and then this purse is from Urban Revivo or Revivo. I don't know how to say it. One of the two. The sixth feminine archetype is the sage and the sage is like the intellectual. They are that old wise soul. They have so much wisdom and their focus is definitely more on expanding their mind and expanding their awareness and their knowledge. That's a lot of where the sages focus are. If you are really interested in things like reading and education and just learning all the time, you probably have a lot of sage energy within you. And the sage, wow, they're their power is is really incredible. They're definitely a lot more independent. They're a lot more focused on changing the world. They're really progressive. I would say like a lot of sage women make a lot of active change towards the world. Also, so does the Huntress. Some examples of figures that we can look towards are women like Emma Watson. UN Women Goodwill Ambassador, thought leader, and leading actor, Emma Watson. After two billion media impressions, 1.1 million pledged he for she's have made practical commitments, as have some of the world's leading universities and companies, to make gender equality a priority in their, in their work and within their communities. Even like in her character Hermione, Hermione is also an example of a sage. You're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You doing then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. Guardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. When I think of the sage in terms of fashion, I definitely like think of like Hermione. <laughs> I definitely think like school girl or just like academia style in general, definitely preppy things. Also like power suits though, and you know, matching suit sets. But I think I'm gonna kind of lean more into the preppy aesthetic just because that's, more of what I have in my closet. I have this oversized white button-down shirt that I got from Abercrombie and this sweater vest is also from Abercrombie and then this white skirt and I'm going to pair it with these boots. I don't know. I love this outfit. I don't know if it perfectly matches the archetype. Maybe it does, but um, this is my interpretation of that archetype with the clothes in my closet. Archetype number seven is the mystic. And it, I mean, even just from the title, you guys can tell how magical this archetype is. Truly, these are some of the most creative people. They're definitely a lot more inwardly focused. They're definitely more homebodies. They like to pursue creativity in all sorts of ways, in terms of art, music, just any way that they can get their creative juices flowing. That is what this archetype really loves to indulge in. They're also very into spirituality and expanding their spiritual bodies and learning more about that kind of stuff. Very witchy, very into astrology. So some figures to look to for inspiration. Off the top of my head, I think the most predominant one is like Stevie Nicks, for example. She has this like beautiful witchy energy to her. She's so mystical and also so artistic and creative. A, a more eccentric version of the mystic in television is like Phoebe from Friends. She was definitely like super like mystical, like definitely a little bit more out there, but she had a little bit more of an extroverted personality. Another example would also be Frida Kahlo and she is definitely more of the embodiment of like the intrinsic one, the homebody one. She didn't really like social interaction that much and 
Like I feel like the mystics, like they're really influential, but in a creative and artistic way that they do independently, if that makes sense. So when I think of fashion, I definitely think bohemian. I definitely think like witchy. I definitely think jewel tones, earthy colors and patterns and um, layers as well. It only makes sense for this outfit to wear moonstone earrings literally in the shape of moons also. So those are going in my ears. I have on just a plain black turtleneck. I think I got this at like Nordstrom Rack like years ago. I love it. I wear it all the time. This dress is from Aster the label. And I think I'm going to add a little snake belt and I'm going to pair it with these little leather boots by Sam Edelman. I am going to wear this little floral printed bag to go with it just to kind of add some pattern to it. All right, you guys, that wraps up this video. I had so much fun doing this. It was really cool and fun to explore the feminine archetypes through fashion, and I hope it gave you some inspiration to do that as well. It's definitely a really fun way to tap into your energy and help you become more of yourself and feel more confident in your skin and also a lot more powerful too. These feminine archetypes, when used properly, they can just propel you so much far forward in life. It is extraordinary. So if you want more information about these archetypes, definitely let me know and I can do more videos on them. And yeah, so I'd be definitely curious to know which of these archetypes you feel you resonate most with. So comment down below and until next time, my sweet, beautiful friends, I will see you later. Bye.